good afternoon to all you folks out there in Derby land. We're back at Fresh and Furious 2019 with the first round of elimination bouts. We've got the number nine ranked. You're live and you're live streaming. We're, the internet is there. we're number nine uh, thicket for, from Forest City Roller Derby in the black up against the Quad City Hot Rods in white. Quad City Hot Rods representing Kingston Roller Derby, Belleville Roller Derby, Northumberland Roller Girls, and Ottawa Valley Roller Derby. Just like that, first jam's already over. Thicket and Quad City Hot Rods each trade a point. Scores one to one after the first jam. Spirited Dragon here spitting fire at you. I'm here with three beers. He's gonna be handling color commentary for this match. Yes, we have black and white on the track at the moment. Just a reminder, these are 20 minute games. So there's no halftime, it goes to the end of regulation and that's it. And the hot rods have uh, lead jam. Fox Given picks up lead jam. Just Amy is loose for thicket, she's coming around. Fox Given trying to break through the pack. She's in lane one. She gets on one foot and she goes by for four points. Here comes Just Amy. She also squeezes through on the inside, picking up four points. Fox Given plows into the back of the pack, taking down 50 Shades of Mayhem. Power jam going on for the thicket at this point. So this jam will go for the full two minutes because the lead jammer is in the penalty box. Nice play there by the jammer. She just nudges the Hot Rods player out of the way and goes through on the inside. Just Amy coming back around again. Fox is back on the track for the uh, Hot Rods. Solid wall for the hot rod. Oh, and what a hit by just Amy. She takes Fox out on the inside and then continues on, picking up another grand slam. Oh, and Fox and just Amy goes down. Here comes Fox Given. She takes over. And no one can call this one off, so it's whoever can get through the pack and make the points. Yes, 20 seconds, just over 20 seconds left in this jam. Both teams walling up. Fox Given goes around the outside. Here comes just Amy on the inside. Fox Given pinballs. Fox is out. Fox with another four points, Just Amy with another four points. They're trading fours back and forth. And that's the end of the jam. Thicket putting up a monster 20 points on that jam. Quad City, a not too shabby 13 points either. Thicket 21, Quad City Hot Rods 14, just, over, uh, just under 17 minutes rather, left to play in the game. Interesting setup for the Hot Rods here. They've split their defense. Thicket moves forward. And it looks like, yes, Quad City going for a sweep. And it works out. They spring their jammer. I think it's Violent Felon. Or, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong roster. Ducked up. Ducked up gets free. Gluteus Maximus right on her heels. And just one point for the Hot Rods. It'll take them longer than 20 minutes to catch up one point at a time. It will. <laughs> Jack's a lot of us on the sidelines arguing that uh, that should be two. That call goes unheard. And we set up to do it again. 16 minutes left to play in the game. Thick it up, 21 to 15. Hot Rods are splitting their defense again. That, that might mean they're going for that sweep. Yes, there it is. There's the sweep. Did not work this time, however. Well, got the lead. 50 Shades of Mayhem up against Fox Given. 50 Shades of Mayhem looks over her shoulder, sees Fox coming up. I think she's going to try and hit it and quit it. She goes through one footed on lane one, calls it off. Four point pickup for the thicket. And stops the hot rods from getting any. Yeah, that's textbook derby right there. Get your points and get out. 
25 for the thicket, 15 for the hot rods. Hot rods going back to that more standard diamond setup. Granted, they do have a they have a blocker in the box, so they don't have that extra blocker for the sweep. Thicket collapses the wall in on the hot rods jammer. Hot rods jammer getting held up quite well by Fillmore, but she gets loose. It's ducked up for the hot rods. Gluteus Maximus out of the pack though. He's a good half track behind her though. Ducked up, probably gonna try for a hit it and quit it. She goes around on the outside, taking and down a, it off. I'm seeing a track cut call. And it looks like yes, I believe that was a zero point pickup for the hot rods because of the cut. And in fact, it's a trip to the box. Power start for the thicket. Interesting interesting thought there though if she cut uh, and was sent to the box she really shouldn't have been able to call off the jam but we're not the referees we just call it and the thicket skater 50 shades of mayhem goes through totally unopposed or sorry it's just amy 66 not 666 and she's got the lead and nice blocking by quad city but not effective enough four point pickup for just Amy she's coming back around again the hot rod jammers back on the track yes that's uh, you see the thicket walling up preparing for the initial pass for the hot rods jammers this is not a scoring pass interesting that Forest City would call it off that that pass wasn't a wasn't a scoring pass no, she had no chance to make any points at all yeah they really should have should have tried for it. Oh, I see what happened. Jammer, uh, their jammer is back at the box again. They called it off to get a fresh jammer out there for another power start. Nice play. They're going to get a full 30 seconds again on the... the timeout hot rods. Good idea here. They've got to they've got shore up their play. Uh, you can't score any points with your jammer in the box. Thicket 33, Quad City Hot Rod 16. Just under halfway. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the sponsors. Uh, one of the sponsors of the tournament, Henderson Brewing Company. Henderson, Bre Henderson Brewing Company strives to create balanced and thoughtful beers that honor traditional ways but are not restricted to them. They want their beers to spark ideas, tell stories, and most of all, be refreshing and enjoyable. They're proud of their beer and the hard work that goes into it, but they also recognize that there are a lot of other great beers out there. For these reasons, they say the best beer is the beer you love. That's Henderson Brewing Company. So meanwhile, back at the track, we've got a very full box. We've got two thicket blockers, one, one uh, hot rod blocker, and the hot rod jammer, most importantly. So we're going to have a pretty empty track for this start. Should be pretty clear sailing for the uh, thicket jammer to get through. Yeah, the blockers are just getting out of the way. The hot rods are setting up their diamond. Here comes a sweep. They've opened up lane one, but not enough. Luis Maximus trying to work her way through. Nice waterfall play by the hot rods. They're doing a really effective job. Oh, but a swing and a miss there. Out of bounds. No pack call. Luis Maximus finally picks up lead jam. The four city blockers are being are, are in the process of being released from the box and coming in and rejoining the pack. I can't see it appears. Yes, the jammer for hot rods back on. Yes, Glees Max and the pivot. Yes, Glees Maximus, however, has completed her first scoring pass. That's four points. Here comes the hot rods jammer. This is not a scoring pass. This is an initial pass. So there are no points scored for this pass. Glees Maximus coming through. She's lined up on the outside. She skates past a down skater. Going again around the outside, her blocker's doing a pretty effective job, and there's the call off. Yeah, right before the hot rod jammer could get up to the pack again. Yes, eight points for the thicket on that one. 41 thicket, hot rod 16, just, un uh, just under 12 minutes left to play. Thicket just playing textbook derby. Get your points, get out, 
get fresh skaters on the track. And the hot rod seems to be making it easy for them with putting their jammer in the penalty box every other jam. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's true too. If you can't be disciplined and stay out of the box, you're going to hand your opponents opportunities. And speaking of opportunities, here comes Just Amy again, lead jammer. She's up against Fox Given. Fox just taken out on the inside of the track. She's now rejoined at the back of the pack. She's coming through on lane three. She runs into Lilith. Lilith doing her best to slow her down. And she gets through. But just Amy, however, picks up four points on a scoring pass. Fox Given before she can even get anywhere as close to the pack, the jam gets called off, and the thicket widen that lead by another four points. So just a reminder, folks, unlike the first round of the tournament, those were uh, ranking games where the score differential uh, mattered in the grand scheme of things, determining who your next round opponent would be. These games, it doesn't matter if you win by 30 or if you win by one. It's just a win's a win. Uh, but the Thicket are doing a good job of padding that lead. They want to move on to the next round. Jam is on, and Gluteus Maximus picks up lead jammer status, and looks like Hot Duck... Rod did a star pass. Uh, no, I don't think they did a star pass. They She stashed the star. Oh. She took the star off her helmet to disguise herself as the jammer until she got through the pack. Yeah, it allowed her to go through, but she still didn't make it through to get a scoring pass. And I, I'm looking to the scoreboard. I'm not seeing any points going on for the thicket, although I believe the referee is indicating three. Yes, three points for the thicket on that jam. 48 thicket, 16 hot rods, nine and a half minutes left to play. Thicket getting wide across the track, trying to block all the lanes at once. Some effective blocking, potentially and some Fox multiplayer. Is his lead jammer. Just Amy right on her tail, though. Fox looks to the line to get some coaching. Fox passes by her blockers. Here comes Just Amy up on the on the Quad City blockers, and she actually goes through and picks up her four points—a four-point steal. Fox Given also picks up four, but now she's chasing. They need to be giving some serious consideration to calling off this jam here. Not seeing it. Nope, and Just Amy picks up another four, and there's a trade of another four points. Yeah, they're just going to run for see how many times they can go through the pack. I, I guess. I guess they have some confidence in their defense that on one of these scoring passes, they're going to stop Just Amy, but I'm, I'm not seeing it. No, she's, she's blasting right through all the time. Yeah, and in fact, yes, uh, 12 points for both sides on that jam. So really a, a net of nothing. There's no change in the differential. That, that was a questionable call on the Quad City Hot Rods part, but they must have had something in mind. Well, it wore out their jammers a little bit more for the next time they're I, up on I the I guess, track. yeah. Uh, 60 points for the Thicket, 28 for the Hot Rods. Eight minutes left to go. Oh, and Gluteus Magsmus with a quick deke to the inside. She takes lead jammer status. And ducked up is right on her tail. In the lead now, but Gluteus Magsmus calls calling it, it off. off. Now, see, there's there's a situation, Three Beers, where you could almost justify that maybe you should not call the jam off. The clock's working in favor of the thicket here. If they're trading points back and forth, really that's that's the thicket's advantage because the clock's running down. Yes. But uh, but Forest City opting to call it off and, and go at it again. Well, the, the big change that I can see is the hot rods don't have anybody in the penalty box. <laughs> that is true. That is true. And Fox is out his lead. And the thicket jammer, Just Amy, has also gotten loose from the box. Fox has got about a quarter of a track. She's spending a lot of time looking back at, at her bench and not really skating forward. And we're going to have trades of points. Oh, and what a, there's a pileup between Fox and Lilith. Everyone seems okay, though. That's good. But the Thicket steal four there, or steal a two. Yeah. We have a timeout by the Hot Rods. 
They've got to figure out an answer here. They're going to say they're going to talk about a new strategy. Yeah, they've got six and a half minutes left to make up 34 points. That's, that's not impossible. I mean, on the first jam of the game, we saw 20 points get put up by the thicket. But but you got to the, the, the blocking needs to, to come out here for yeah, they, the high they, rods. They don't seem to be very effective against the thickets uh, jammer getting through each time. like to take this opportunity again to thank another one of our sponsors, rollergirl.ca. For all your skating needs, visit rollergirl.ca. And that's the timeout. So six and a half minutes left to go in the game. Probably looking at maybe four jams, although Quad City, uh, no, Quad City's used up all their timeouts. Although they could use, I guess they could use their official review and, and use that for a timeout. Um, what's the plan here? You gotta make up, you've gotta double your score in, in four jams almost. Well, there, there's a good start. They got lead. Ducked up is loose. Gluteus Maximus getting swallowed up by the pack, but now she's gotten loose. Here comes Ducked up on her scoring pass. She runs into Black Widow, but goes around on the outside. Out for four points. So there's a good start. Oh, and it's a power jam for the Hot Rods. Gluteus Maximus picked up a penalty at some point along the way, so there's 30 seconds of un unopposed jamming going on for the Hot Rods. <laughs> Through for another four. Yeah, d interesting strategy. She almost dove right into the middle of the pack there and, and just sort of pushed her way through. Whatever works for you at this point, I guess. Ducked up, not getting much help from her team here, really. They're just leaving her to, to f fight her own way through. But she made it out. Yep, that's another four points. 64 thick at 42 hot rods. The Thicket Jammer is loose. Gluteus Maximus has completed an initial pass now. She's eligible to start scoring. Let's see if they decide to call it off. Yes, they, they do. do. Yep. 16 points on that jam for the Hot Rods. Whatever happened on that timeout, uh, they it's figured a difference. It, absolutely. 18-point lead for the Thicket. Just over five minutes left to go in the game. This one isn't over yet, folks. It looks like Fox given on the line for the Hot Rods. Yes. And I think it's just Amy for the thicket. Just Amy comes around through lane yeah, one. Got lead. Fox is also sprung. It's a jammer race now. Yeah, he's giving her a run. She's giving her a run. And, and and there again, three beers. I mean, not not to not to second guess the the strategy of the thicket, but. You know, you've got an 18-point lead. It's a jammer race. Why not? Why not at go least for the points? Well, either go for the points or at least let let their jammer skate a, at least another five seconds. Come up to the back of the run, pack. Run the clock. Yeah, run the clock out. The clock. The clock is the sixth player on the track for the thicket right now. So 18-point differential. We'll, we'll do it all again. Four minutes left on the clock. Here comes Gluteus Maximus. She's run into a pretty effective wall. And ducked up is out his lead. Now, so here we've got the exact same situation, except with the roles reversed. Hot Rod have lead jammer, but with a thicket jammer hot on her tail, and they're not calling it off. They're they're trying for the points. And the thicket just got at least three before the Hot Rod called it off. Uh, I'm seeing two for the thicket. And it like she went around three. yeah, it, it looked like three, but the ref called two. Hot Rods picked up four, so that that was a two-point advantage. I mean, that's uh, you know that's that's standard derby at the start of a game, but when you're down by when you're down double digits with maybe two jams left in the game, uh, you know, two points isn't going to cut it. I I, I would have thought that they should have called that off a lot sooner and tried for a better start, but. That's, uh, you know, they saw the opportunity for points and, and they picked him up. Just Amy, and here again we've got 
We've got Fox Given and Just Amy in a jammer race. Fox Given looks back for some instructions. Just Amy keeping on her tail. There's a couple goats. There we go. Yeah, Fox called it off before anybody got any points. Yes, the, de the defense on that one uh, managed to get a couple goats loose, and it was a straight two to nothing jam there. But there again, we're down to two and a half minutes. Quad City needs 13 points. It's absolutely doable. I would not say that this game is in the books, but a lot of things need to go right for Quad City. I, I, if I'm on the Quad City bench, after this jam, I'm using my official review. Just ask a dumb question. It, it, it doesn't matter. You can still use your review to, to ask any question. It gives your skaters that break that they're going to need. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Tickets stops the clock. Out. Yeah, Tickets out for lead. Gluteus Magsmus, and she's got a good lead. She's got about a half a track here. She's going to have an opportunity to put some points on the board. Duck Duck is coming, yeah, at least a half a track away. Gluteus Magsmus uses her own blockers as defenders. She squeezes around and calls it off. Let's before, before the hot rods can get any. Yep, three points for the thicket. And here we go, official review. You called it. 69 thicket, 53 for the hot rods. One minute, 48 seconds left. Time has been stopped, or clock has been stopped. And and uh, this is exactly what's going on. They're not even... Jax hasn't even approached the referees to ask a question. They're, they're strictly... He's obviously just using the official review to stop the clock and get a timeout. See if this is as effective as the last time they had a timeout and the strategy, and it came out and scored quite a few I points. Think that, I think they actually put up 16 points after the last timeout, and, and that's the deficit here, 16 points. So I'll, I'll ask you, we've been calling this game. You're down by 16. you got potentially one jam left. Who, which, who do you think the hot rods are going to put out there? I'd say Fox at the so far from, from what I've seen on the track is they're, they're fastest, but... That's 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 Jax's call. Yeah, yeah, you got, and it is Fox going out to the line, it, it, because it is going to be a speed factor. She's uh, to to catch up. Fox is going to have to lap the pack four times. That's a lot of skating to fit in in under two minutes. And they're off. Fox taking through the middle. She does have lead. The defenders are holding up just Amy, but as I say that, she moves to lane four and she gets loose. So Fox has a half lap advantage. And there's the first four points. Here comes just Amy. Oh, and she, oh my goodness, she skates by Quad City. Quad City didn't even make an attempt at a block there. That was, that was the Olay defense, as we like to call it. You get out of the way. And there's there's another one. So here's here's the problem is is that Fox is putting up those points. But so is Amy. Exactly. I mean, Fox has put up eight of the sixteen points they initially needed, but the thicket have answered right back. The 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 Quad City defenders need to def need to get that defense going. And and they didn't do it that time. The, and and what I'm seeing is they're they're literally coming to a stop when the jammer comes up behind them. Their their feet aren't moving. You, they got to keep their feet moving and keep moving forward. If your you feet aren't moving, you, you can't uh, move in front of the jammer or, or have any effective blocking. Yeah, and I think that's going to be the, I mean, um, the Quad City Hot Rods can't stop the clock. We've got 22 seconds left in regulation. I think we're going to get one last jam. The, the way the clock is going to work out, we are going to get one last jam. Hot Rods are going to have to pick up 13 points. Which again is doable, but they've got to be able to block the the thickets jam. They, they need they need a block or they need a, they need a power jam. I, I I think really, and that's that's not an insult to the hot rods jammers. They're doing quite well. It's just 13 points is a lot for any jammer to make up when you got another jammer on the track, and especially when that jammer's loose. Ducked up is three for four points. Here comes Gluteus Maximus. She's pushing into the pack. Not using her blockers really very effectively. Her blockers are her blockers are abandoning help to, to, to go on to the defense. 
And another Back four points. Two, yep. Well, there, this is something might be happening here. Oh, Gluteus Maximus finally makes through the pack, so she steals four points back. This is going to be a close one, folks. There's four points for the Hot Rods. Here comes Gluteus Maximus. She's in lane one. She goes down. Gluteus Maximus tiptoes through the outside. Keeping in mind, she's got this through. It's she, a one-point game. Well, but, but I, I question how many points Gluteus has pa picked up because when she passes the player, she picks up the point even if she has to go back. Gluteus picks up her four, and that the whistle's been blown. The I, I heard a whistle. I don't know if that was a penalty. It sounded like a single whistle for a penalty. Yes, that's that's true. And there's there's a hot rod in the box. Oh, and there's also a thicket in the box. Yep. Oh my goodness, the hot rods are down by a single point. 26 seconds left to go in this jam. Gluteus Maximus. It's it's yet to be decided how many points Gluteus has picked up here, though. And there she comes through. Duck has gone through for another four. That yep. puts hot rods ahead. Now, but Maximus just passed the pack, so and she picks up four. Thicket have six seconds. Duck Duck makes it around. They're furiously calling for her to call. She calls it off. 96, 93 unofficially. Wow. That was a, what an amazing jam. Looks like Gluteus Maximus may have been injured on that last jam, which may explain. Oh, yes. Yeah, she's being helped off the track. It's very unfortunate. And if she was injured, I mean, what an effective job. She still put up 12 points on that last jam. And it it's looking like that this is, that is an official score. Quad City Hot Rods 96 advance in the tournament, the thicket. Pack up their gear. They're heading back to Forest City today. What an amazing game. That was a heck of a game, yes. Well, that's going to be the end of it for uh, myself and Three Beers, folks. Again, hope you're enjoying the streams. Uh, continue watching, and happy derby. Man, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fox, stand up. <laughs> I don't see any more past this one. Oh, where did it go? It was right there. Dragon grabbed it. Maybe he did. Talk about Good amazing job. game to be at. Wow. I love the end. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like really freaking oh. out watching it. <laughs> it's a little bit harder when there's only one person talking. I like, know. What do you say? You have to bam. <laughs> and I'm like trying not to give away what the position is taking.
find any more, um, in? Any more people? No, no, I, I don't know after this. After this? I have no idea. I think we're going to wait for Jax to do up yeah. the next. Because yeah. I think everybody just kind of got what they were for round two and then right. left. So we'll play it by ear. Sounds because the headphones have been buggy lately. Okay. Give me a wave because that's the control panel and I can mess with it if you, if you need a louder or quieter sound card. Oh my god. So what if I clench her? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of them. Oh my god. No kidding. And the voice. You got it. Oh. Um, so we don't know what's going on beyond round two, right? No, we do not. Okay. So, uh, and that's where. We're still in both arenas. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they have a second mic over here. Yeah. Okay. Because these two games are both over here. Actually, these four games are over here. And they're um, So then we're down to four announcers. So we've got two on stream and I think two on house. Perfect. Um, and the, the last four are full games, right? They're full games. Okay. Yeah, these, sorry, no, these two are full games. Oh, sorry. Just these two. Those are still 20 minutes. And somebody walked off with the uh, round two schedule because beyond this, I don't know. Uh, Readers has it. I oh. Have... oh, he's right there. He doesn't Three have it. Do you still have the round the other racket? Dragon took it. Who did? Dragon must have just. Is that him? Is that you? Oh. Do you have? Do you have the schedule? Do you have the bracket that has the schedule written oh, in the bottom? I, did I steal it? I did it. I Readers did is already on. Oh, is that it there? Oh, it's oh, it's here. There it is. No, it's <laughs> he didn't steal it. He didn't steal it. It was on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Did you see that game? So I, I, I was oh. doing the home oh, in the last thing. That it was, was exciting. Amazing. That was so amazing. sweet. Holy shit. I was so lucky that's to get that one. That's 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 yeah, so that was, this was, that like, was amazing, like, what a comeback. I'm so excited now, because they were so disappointed. They said they would have rather lost by, like, 10 or 15 than lose by one. Well, and that yeah. is true. And exactly. Yeah. And that I said the same thing to him when I was talking. So, all right, so, um, there's less games now, so i got to figure out where everybody's at. Um, okay. So it'll probably be just one game, and then I'll weed out, I, I mean, it sucks because I can't keep everybody announcing right from the end. Oh, for sure. So... Um, We're going to so I don't know. Let, I don't know who's doing what. Uh, I okay. So what I will do is put my glasses on so I can see where I'm right. So for this game, I'm gonna have. That's the final game, right? Yeah. So you guys will be on house. Perfect. You two oh. on house. Oh, that's you two on oh. house. We got this girl. And I will put oh, three beers. Beers, not bears. <laughs> I you want three beers it, on though. stream. Like three bears. You and three beers on stream for the final game. Nice. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So then I will slot other announcers into the uh, four more announcers into here for house and stream. I don't know who yet. But we also don't. I know. Oh, I didn't <laughs> oh, these games are done. Oh, three o'clock's not done. No. And how do you see? The oh, because I had another announcer around. coming. That's right. Um, but I've got her in here. No, so I was I so confused. I I so I started off with Survey Monkey, right, so okay. and I had 13 announcers in Survey Monkey, and all the information was in Survey Monkey, and everything was great. And six of those 13 backed out. So then I had messages in um, email and in Facebook Messenger 
and everybody's information was everywhere, So, and some were real names and some were derby names, and it got so fucking confused that I didn't know who was who. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure Jillian that wasn't there for announcing her games this morning is Smash. Okay. That they're the same person, and she wasn't getting here until after 3 o'clock. Okay, so I'm solo until she gets here, though. Uh, she is on... Right, so she's not here yet. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so if anybody else wants to jump in with you, you won't be solo. Somebody else wants Doesn't to jump in, that's cool. Me. Anybody wants to jump in? So okay. I will put her on stream. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure what else was ha That's why I waited to fill that out. Because uh, I wasn't sure who the other person was, if they were the same. It was just, right. it was... So this is for 3 o'clock? Yeah. Um, so where's Nick? Nick is... Nick is supposed to be on the next game for House. Is that Nick? Yes, that's Nick. So there. Nick is here. <laughs> I was freaking full. So I'll put Smash there. So who's gonna, which one of you three is gonna jump on here? I will. Okay. I was so then I'll put you two, so. um, who wants to do house, who wants to do stream of you two for the next game? I can do house. You can do house? Yeah. So, okay. That's the... That's the 3.30 three, three, three game. So 3.30 yeah. I'm gonna do stream? Yes. Okay. Um, and if this person doesn't show up, do you want to jump in on there? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so then I'll work on, I will work on the next round. Um, so who do I have over here? I'll have to collaborate with the other. So we've got how many over here? Two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. So over here. Does anyone have a preference for stream over house? Yes. What do you prefer? Stream. Stream. Have you done stream? I haven't done house yet. I did stream already. Okay. So you're on house next game now. Yeah, I'm on house now. Yeah. I don't personally care. You, okay. <laughs> you don't care? Okay. So, because um, I'm just thinking there's six announcers and there's two games in the next round. So you guys will each get one game in that next round. And then it's here, we'll probably, um, we've got three games for the rest of the announcers because you four are already on the last game. Right. So we'll go with that. Um, let me get me. I just, I got to check in with the other, the announcers over there and see what's going on. Well, we're good for now. Why don't you check in with them and then, so my next game is 3.30, that's correct, right? Yes. Okay. 3.30 right here. Okay, I'm just going to leave this here for now, yeah. and then I will come back to it. Okay. I'm going to go check in over there. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Looks like we're getting ready to start 
Uh, the second game of Tier 2 here, we have Georgina Roller Derby squaring off against Hogtown Potty. I'm Carps. I'm here with Three Beers. How's everything looking today here uh, with this match, Three Beers? So far, so good, uh, but it's early yet. We'll see when after the first jam is done. Yeah, I guess we shouldn't uh, count our eggs before they're hatched here, eh? Almost through, there you go! Woo! Good through there by oh. Kay Slay. Uh, Moxie Squirrel close behind. Yeah. And she gets through for four points and calls it off. Strategy 101. You betcha. Hit it and quit it. And it shows. Hogtown 0, uh, Georgina 4. Very similar strategy for uh, Georgina uh, as in their first round. Hogtown in black through number 534, Miss Chief. There she comes. Little jump at the apex through for another four. Got this. And he's still trying to get through the pack. Good walls being thrown up uh, by Party. Sorry, Hogtown Party. Miss Chief getting a uh, few insurance points for, ho for Hogtown Party. They didn't even see her coming. She was right through. Oh, she was like vapor. And it looks like Georgina's jammer's in the box, so it's a power jam for uh, Hogtown. Another four up on the board. That gap is slowly but surely widening. Number 44, Penny Trader for uh, Georgina Roller Derby in white in the sin bin. Fire up. And she calls it off after putting up another four. So it's now Hogtown 20 and Georgina 4. It's an excellent strategy, actually, as uh, Georgina ends up starting with their jammer in the box. It's a power start then for Hogtown Party. They stand a good chance of getting lead jam. Moxie's made it through for a uh, lead. She took advantage of that overcommitment from Kay Slay on the inside. And Georgina's jammer's back on the track, and she makes it through for her first pass. Moxie Squirrel now off to the sin bin for Georgetown Party. Georgetown, Hogtown. Georgina has a power jam. Both jammers now back on the track. I think Moxie went off on mistake. There was another one of her blockers was sent off her direction and Moxie went off with her. I believe you're right. There you go. There you go. Oh, Penny Trader took advantage of that outside lane being wide open. That was a strange sequence of events. If, if Moxie had actually gone to the penalty box, she wouldn't have been able to call it off. No, you're because, because she was in error, she, when she came back on the track, was able to. Yeah, absolutely. She didn't lose that lead jam status uh, that is usually taking aw taken away when a jammer goes into the box. 
We have 24 for Hogtown and 12 for Georgina. Hogtown is out again with Lee Jem. That's Miss Chief. Chief. Yes, I was going to say, that's Miss Chief again on the, uh, on the inside. She sure likes to be sneaky there. Do whatever it takes to get by the blockers and get your points. Well, she's living up to her name, isn't she there, Miss Chief? Oh, she's through, through the... again. Wow. Georgina looks like she's kind of either... In, no, she's back up. Destroyer's heading to the penalty box. So it's a power jam for Hogtown. Georgina throwing up some tough blockers up against Miss Chief. But she takes advantage of the... Hogtown jammers going to the penalty box. So that should release uh, Destroyer. Yes, and Miss Chief will only serve as much penalty time as Destroyer did. She's taking the, the helmet cover off, so she's going to attempt to start pass to her pivot. I think when she went to the penalty box, Destroyer didn't look like she had much energy left. And it's, it was a successful star pass. Candy yeah. Crush now has a, is the jammer for Georgina. I agree with uh, Destroyer looking like she was quite tired. Big, heavy hit from uh, Miss Chief to Candy Crusher, taking advantage of her ginger approach to the pack. Oh, and one that skate one around. Around the outside. Now it's jammer on jammer, but there's the end of the jam. Two minutes. Looked like Candy Crusher was uh, winding up with Miss Chief to give her a little bit of payback. <laughs> she was, Chief was lucky that the jam was called off then. And we have 40 for Hogtown and 16 for Georgina. Moxie jamming for a hog town. Gets through. <laughs> Trixie Tourniquet for Georgina. Jamming for the first time today, actually. And Moxie calls it off before Georgina gets any points. Hogtown Party doing a good job at keeping Georgina at bay with that uh, hit it and quit it strategy. Maybe that's why they're throwing out different jammers for Georgina to see if they can get around that strategy. Yeah, they're trying to break that code for sure. Time out, Georgina. They've got to come up with some strategy because their jammer and a blocker is in the penalty box. This time out brought to you by rollergirl.ca. might be a, a strategy for, for Georgina to give their uh, players a bit of a rest because the last two jammers looked like they were kind of uh, getting tired at the end of the jam. For sure, they definitely do look winded. And again, we have uh, Hogtown starting uh, with one jammer on the track and uh, Georgina's jammer in the penalty box. Miss Chief trying to take advantage of this power start. Does so successfully on the outside of turn one. 
Georgina's got another one going to the penalty box. They need to start charging admission for that penalty box. Big fall. Bad to the bone. Georgina's Take jammer's back on the track. She still has to go through the pack for her initial pass. Something Miss Chief can definitely take advantage of. Georgina's jammer is going back to the penalty box for a block, black, a, a box. Can't, can't get my tongue. <laughs> can't get my tongue out of my teeth. A back, back block. block. I knew you could do it. <laughs> Miss Chief, for the first time this game, Go struggling to get up. through the pack. She's been through a couple of times, so maybe she's losing steam. Yes. Well, maybe that pep talk that uh, Georgina had really struck home with the blockers. Well, they seem to be blocking her more effectively this time, yes. Big fall for Miss Chief at turn four. But that gives another Georgina blocker a penalty. Looks like another power start for Hogtown Party. Yeah, Georgina's uh, jammer is still in the box, she's, but she's standing with less than 10 seconds. Score is 40, 50, 52 Hogtown to 16 Georgina with 10 minutes to go. Timeout has been called. I believe it's an official timeout. This timeout brought to you today by Spectrum Event Medical Services. As Ontario's largest event medical services company, we provide on-site medical teams to ensure the health and safety of your attendees. Whether you're hosting a football game, concert, gala, or filming a movie or television show, our team of certified professionals can perform on-site medical services and or escort attendees to hospitals via our non-urgent patient transfer vehicles. The official timeout was to give uh, the Hogtown Jammer a misconduct, so she starts in the box. Um, Georgina now has a chance for the lead jam. Make a hole. Oh, and a nice love tap there by Hell Nino. Looks like we're attempting a panty pass for Georgina. The Hugtown Jammer is back on the track and has the opportunity to take lead. Successful panty pass for Georgina as Penny Trader dons the Star of Destiny. Another four for each jammer. Georgina finally putting points up on the board after being stagnant for a couple of jams. Well, this jam is going to go to the two full minutes because they didn't give Jura Hogtown the lead. That's what you get for going to the penalty box. You need to think about what you've done. That's true, but in this case, the jammer started in the penalty box, so she was eligible to become leader. And when the Georgina jammer took the yeah. helmet cover off her helmet, she was disqualified. You're right. Once the panty is passed to the pivot, they are no longer eligible to get that lead jam status that's so coveted. But it doesn't seem to matter in this jam. They're both going for points. Oh, yes. Go big or go home. Nice hit by Live and Let Die. Seemed to just glance right off of Mischief. Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> that was a little too close for comfort. You'd think we had a beer wall here or something, wouldn't you? <laughs> no I'm kidding. Official timeout has been called. <laughs> it 
This timeout brought to you today by Complete Energy Solutions. For all you HVAC, energy management and medical needs, call Complete Energy Solutions. They were just double checking with the scoreboard. We're ready to go again. Hogtown 64, Georgina 28 with uh, just over seven minutes to go. She ran right up that Virginia lane. She has one. lead for a change. Fortunate. But Hogtown is right after her. Hot on her heels, that's for sure. Woo! Oh, and a jump at the end. She apex. does an apex jump for a four pointer. Georgina just found some energy. Yes, sir, they sure did. If they can keep up with this momentum, they should be able to close that gap quite easily. She's through again. That's 12 points. Georgina Roller Derby made up of three separate teams, uh, which are Georgina Roller Derby, Renegade Derby Dames, South and South Simcoe Rebel Rollers. Looks like Hogtown Party is answering back. Number 42, Zool, for Hogtown again at the apex. Yeah, they're just trading points now. Yes, they sure are. They're quite evenly matched. Didn't seem to phase Zool when... Uh, no, she's stepping around them with ease. Georgina calls it off. Try to stop. Hogtown from getting any more points. Yes, they definitely needed to stop that bleed, and that calling off the jam is certainly the most effective way to do that. <laughs> Just over five and a half minutes left in gameplay. Hogtown Party still leading Georgina Roller Derby 86 to 48. We have Molly again for Hogtown, and she gets lead. For a moxie. Yeah. Betty Fight is out for uh, Georgina. Yeah, they're mixing it up. They've got a, that's the fifth different jammer for Georgina. After a little bit of confusion there, Moxie Scroll was trying to call that jam off. A little bit of a delayed response. I think they weren't sure whether she was getting a penalty or not. That's that's usually a, a crutch right there, whether to call it off or whether to give them a penalty. That's true. I mean, so many penalties are called at the whistle. And I, I found uh, that one of my many mistakes was to chime in on the four whistles when the jam timer or the jam referee was calling a penalty and a, the, the jam shouldn't have been called off. There you go, Zool through there like a bullet. Yeah, they've got a power jam again with uh, the Georgina jammer in the penalty box. Hogtown definitely aiming to put a bit of distance between that point bracket. And a hop, skip, and a jump. Georgina doesn't seem to be very effective at stopping her. She's just dancing around them. Well, she's busting through that wall like she's the Kool-Aid man. It's hard to stop that guy. And she calls it off just as Georgina's dra jammer comes back on the track. Excellent strategy for buying them some insurance points. Which now is 102 to 48. <laughs> and with that being the uh, only the 10th jam, that's quite impressive for a Hogtown party. Yes, it's very rare you can see 10 points per jam. Georgina's got out lead, but Moxie's right on her tail. 
Live and Let Die doing a lot of jamming. Uh, their first round game is uh, quite the force to be reckoned with, as we can see. Now she's almost got a three quarters of a track lead on her. And she's through. Yeah. Oh, she sent Hal Nino to the floor like a domino. Moxie's having a tough time keeping up with her, even though they're both getting through. Bit of fancy footwork on the line there for Live and Let Die. Moxie answers back by sweeping her way through that pack. And Georgina calls it off before Moxie can get, in, get through and get any more points. They gained quite a few points there. Not enough to uh, make a significant dent in that lead. Hogtown Party still leading 113 over Georgina Roller Derby, 64. Georgina with two in the sin bin, their pivot and captain, uh, Michelle on wheels among the two blockers. So Hogtown gets through easily and becomes lead. That's Zool again. Kay Slay's not gonna let her go without a fight. Oh, well, she's right on her heels. Oh, and Zool calls it off, but not before Kay Slay could slip through there on the inside line for four. That was, that was a strange strategy. I saw the two Georgina blockers standing on the outside of the track letting both jammers go through. <laughs> and we have another official timeout. This time out brought to you by Smid Construction. We solve your expansion joint issues, waterproofing failures, and concrete deterioration due to weathering and aging of your properties. With over 50 years of service in the greater Toronto area, we are confident that we can perform repairs to any project, whether it be multi-level, underground, or above ground parking garage. back with less than a minute to go. All right, Georgina! Hog Town is out with lead jam again. That's a duel. Oh, it's Nick, he's down there. Wow, on the apex, sweeping it again for yeah. Zool, like there's nothing there. And she calls it off as soon as the Georgina Jammer got out of the pack. Time out so that we can get another jam in before the end of the official time. Yes, time management is definitely a thing in roller derby. It's very strategic. Forces the jam to go to full two-minute status uh, despite what's, what amount of time is left on the clock. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank Layer 9 for live streaming today's Fresh, Fresh and the Furious. Fresh and the Furious turns 10 this year. It's been a decade of derby, and we love you for it. Let's go, 
And Moxie is out for lead jam again. She squirreled herself away on that inside lane. Live and let die, not really wanting to let her get away that quickly. As she's closing up fast, Moxie's still trying to get through the pack. And Liv is through for four points. Her teammates doing a good job uh, positionally blocking Moxie. But since Moxie had lead jam, she had the opportunity to call it off. Just before Liv got to the pack. Unofficial score standing, Hogtown 125, Georgina 76, just waiting for the sweeping whistle, indicating a final score. This win advancing Hogtown party, and unfortunately, we say goodbye to Georgina Roller Derby. Forget to hit up Fresh and the Furious on social media, Facebook, Twitter, wherever else, at hashtag FNF Derby 2019. And it is official 125 Hogtown, 76 Georgina. Well, that's the uh, all they wrote for that one. I'm Carps, that's Three Beers. Thank you so much for tuning in for the second game of round two. Stay tuned for round two, third game shortly to follow. I was coming to see.
both have to share. Yes. <laughs> Can you hear me? I can totally hear you. <laughs> Great. Did, uh, I went into the ref room and talked to them and they discussed uh, Moxie starting in the penalty box and Georgina taking his panty cover off. Yeah. And they said, yeah, Moxie should have been eligible for leaving. Oh, but they missed it. Well, fair enough. Yeah. That's what word. they talked about it. They knew it. Hindsight's 2020, right? Yeah. Yep. And it didn't make a big difference in that jam because they both just kept going before. But they knew about it. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like they're warming up for game three of round two. I'm Carps with Axe Stress. How you doing, girl? I'm doing good. How you doing? Oh, surviving. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Catitude from uh, Ottawa, Assault City, and Nipissing squaring off against the Vipers from right here in T.O. And they're just running through some of their practices. Pre-game practices. So important to remain warm and limber. Yes. Expecting that this is going to be a pretty good matchup. Guaranteed. Catitude running a very, very small bench uh, with just four, five, counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight active skaters, which mean they've got a couple of jammers in the mix as well so uh, either a static blocker rotation and they're rotating through their jammers or they're rotating everybody <laughs> yeah that's not a lot of people we've got i think 14 here on the vipers side 
Vipers lo losing their first round game to Battalion 819. Looking probably for a W this time around. Yes, absolutely. Both teams, I'm sure, are going to be looking to move on. If only both could. Yeah, I know. It's sad when one team loses. Exciting for one and sad for the other. But then we gain more cheerleaders in the crowd. That's so. right. <laughs> and we're here at Ted Breve Arena all day. I believe the last game is scheduled for 8 o'clock. Yes, it is. The Yes, 8 o'clock is, is tip-off time for that gold and silver game if you want to come down it's ten dollars at the door seniors are only eight dollars and if you want to bring the kids 12 and under is free hey that's a good deal it is a good deal and it's a nice family outing it sure is yep it's a little warm in the ted reeves arena right now but that's to be expected with such a beautiful day outside well, the good thing is that they give you a bracelet so you can come and go. If you want to go outside, you can come back in. That's very true. And there's a food truck outside. Oh, yes. Serving Greek food. I believe they're called the Aegean Greek truck. I had some of their honey balls earlier. Oh, they were good. <laughs> oh, man, I'm thinking of them right now. Well, I think anything with honey is going to be good. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> now you're talking my language with food. <laughs> <laughs> food goes here, and I'm pointing to my mouth. <laughs> also, we have Henderson Brewing Company offering some cold suds off to the side. Henderson Brewing Company, we strive to create balanced and thoughtful beers that honor traditional ways but are not restricted to them. They have some cider back there, too. Oh, girl, I'm going to go. <laughs> brick house cider. That's what it is. Brick house cider. Now, yep. what's the difference between brick house cider and regular cider? I don't know. Is it just <laughs> that it's made in a brick house? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to the wood house from an apple tree. <laughs> That's true. Pressed cider is different than maybe brick house cider. Who knows? Yeah. All we know is it's delicious. And you can hear people cheering. We're about to start. You can hear the excitement, I think, in the background. Absolutely, as more and more skaters are filtering in from the bubble as well. There's quite the, uh, the crowd of, of derblets behind me and you. Yeah. Us. Catitude is from Ottawa, Nipissing, and Assault City. I like Assault City. I wonder if there's a Nepepper City. <laughs> Okay, they've blown the whistle for the teams to get onto the track. Vipers out for a bit of venom. Catitude serving attitude. <laughs> Retract those claws. <laughs> Vipers take it on the outside. Number 624, Big Dyke Energy. Neptune June for Catitude, also free of the melee. And it's been called by Torrent. Big Dyke Energy calls it off. Vipers putting two points up on the board. Big Dyke Energy calling it off before any damage is done by Catitude. So 
So the end of the first jam, we've got two to nothing for the Vipers. Hit it and quit it strategy. It's a very good strategy. It's effective, and especially at the beginning of a game, it buys you that distance that you need to maintain. That's right. And there they go. Bambi is for the Candidude, is through the pack, called it off. Did you see what happened there? She just called it off, uh, and okay. she's going out again as Jammer. Maybe she decided that it was a good strategy if the Vipers put out a strong wall, and it looked like it was a difficult wall for her to get through. Yeah. That might be it then. I can't see. And Bambi's trying to get through again. Flinty Boots got through for Tord. And Bambi is now through for, for Catitude as well. Big fall. Oh, big fall. And here comes Bambi around. She's going to try and get through the pack. Oh, right around the inside, past them, just like that. Squeaked in there on the inside line. And Flinty Boots as well. Another four points. Flinty Boots juking her way to the outside, gets around the catitude. And they're each collecting four points every time they get through. And Catitude called it off. So that was 16 points for the Vipers. 11 for Catitude during that. 12, sorry, for Catitude during that. Jam, so the score is now 18 to 12 for the Vipers. Yes, Vipers holding on to a very narrow lead. Only six points uh, separate these two teams. That that was uh, that was a good jam for both teams. And we've got a we've got a official timeout here. Official timeout brought to you by Copycat Reproduction. Offers printing, brochures, copying design. Serving the Danforth area since 1999. That rhymes. It does <laughs> rhyme. You can hear the rhyme when you say it. Prince would be proud. <laughs> He's constantly partying since it was 1999 anyways. <laughs> Looks like we're ready to go again. And we're off. Looks like the official timeout resulted in the Vipers jammer being placed in the sin bin, resulting in a power start for Lady Trample and the Catitude. Oh, coming up against a solid wall. S9339. Oh. Luna and back up. Luna shove good for the Vipers. There she's through. Giving Lady Trample what fur. Four points for Catitude, courtesy. Number 9339. And that was the Viper's initial pass as she was released yep. from the box. 
But there's a box full of catitude. <laughs> and here comes Flinty Boots again from Tord, who's made four points. Flinty's getting a very solid uh, game last game last uh, round. Yep, she's through again. Luna Shovegood doing the do si -do with Lady Trample. Viper's gaining 10 points, that jam. Katatu gaining 12. Still both teams within spitting distance of each other. 28 to 24, it's pretty close. It sure is. The Katatu can catch up very easily in one jam. Very, very easily. Vipers, though, take lead jam as Big Dyke Energy makes her way through that catastrophic. And calls it off before she gets through. Before Bambi gets through, she called off, the Tord called off the jam. Very effective, hitting it and quitting it for two points for the Vipers. Having such a short bench must be... Uh, tiring. Very tiring, uh, I'm tired watching this. <laughs> Girl, I need a nap. Okay, here we go. Tord is out of the pack. Well, Catitude is scratching and clawing her way through. Oh, down she goes. Back up. And she's through the pack as well. Viper has tried to give a little bit of chase there, but to no avail. Sam calls it off from Tord. Don't know if it was in time to keep the other from getting any points. It yep, was. It was. Just by the skin of her teeth. So we're at 38 to 24 now after this last jam. So that's a bit of a widening gap yep. between the two teams. The Vipers are definitely getting themselves some insurance points with Catitude calling a timeout. This timeout brought to you by RollerGirl.ca. For all your skating needs, visit RollerGirl.ca. They're having a, quite a discussion in the middle there. And once again, we're at Ted Reeve Arena. You can come on down. There's lots of time left, lots of games left. Tons of gameplay left. We'd love to see your beautiful faces down here. And this is the 10th Crash and Furious. Number 10. It's a big one. Big, big one. Okay, we're, we're off again for the next jam. Looks like number three, two, one for Catitude. Bash it. Hit her noggin off the floor. They were doing a few concussion tests following the her finger and all that good stuff. Oh. Whoa. And Flinty Boots went down. She's back up on her feet. Oh, she went down like a sack of potatoes, but she rolled with it. Bambi's trying to get through. There she goes. Successful panty pass for Flinty Boots, giving it off to Femme Brule. Oh, she's dropped the she's dropped it. Because Incomplete she, star pass. she is not the pivot. Ah, that's right. You have to be the pivot to get that. The pivot can And only I thought that only She thought, I thought she that only the jammer could pick up that up after it's fallen. That's like very, one. very true, yes. Uh, she so uh, Flinty she's got a penalty. She's wearing the 
cover now. Ben Brule thought she was wearing the pivot panty. Turns out she was not. It was a successful star pass, but not a legal one. And meanwhile, Bambi is just skating through. <laughs> Nobody seems to know that the jam was still going on. They're no. Just letting her by. There was some confusion when it came <laughs> to Flinty was. Boots and picking up that uh, star panty because she is the only one that can touch that star panty as she was the legal jammer at the beginning of the jam. That's right. And so their jammer is now in the penalty box. And for the first time this game, Catitude takes the yep. lead. That's all it takes is one power jam. Absolutely. She's racking them up. And she has called it off. Bambi a, calls it off from Catitude, and they've got a big jam. That was a 20-point jam. Time out called. I'm not surprised by that. They're going to no. want to know what happened. Absolutely. So 44 for Catitude, 38 for the Vipers. Catitude is in the lead, as you said, for the first time. Absolutely. And we've got a box full of Vipers over there and one Catitude. It's a power start well, for Catitude. 20 points for Catitude in this last jam. You know, 20 and points. for Viper. Exactly. They held them off mm -hmm. uh, thanks to that panty pass confusion. Yeah. The panty pass is a very particular thing to do, it, and you got to do it right. Absolutely. There can't be any interference from the opposing team, right. uh, or else you'll get a penalty. Mm -hmm. Or the opposing team will get the penalty, I should say, not you. You yeah. won't get anything because we're announcing. No. <laughs> but it has to be done successfully, and it has to be done to the right person. That's right. It has to be done to the pivot, not a blocker, and once it's dropped out of the if it was not put on the helmet and it's been dropped and nobody else is touching it only the jammer can pick it up correct but as a blocker for a strategy you can go over and just hover over top of that panty and prevent that opposing jammer from picking that yeah. up as a strategy yeah yeah it was unfortunate that one of the that the pivot was it the pivot who picked it up and put it on it was a woman that thought she was the pivot. Yes. She did not. Bambi getting lead jam. And the score stands 44 to 38 after that timeout. Bambi, a little juke, a little jostle around the two lone Viper blockers. Uh, and she ducks and weaves past them. Bambi is through. Another four points. Now it should stand to note that if there are blockers of the opposing team in the sin bin, every time the, the jammer of the opposite team of the people that are in the sin bin Whoa. gets passed. That was quite a little maneuver she did there. That Bambi. was. That was impressive. And she's calling off the jam. Our points. Wow, 56 for Catitude, 38 for the Vipers. That has widened in this jam. Big time, 12 big points for Bambi. Vipers jammer standing in the box. That means she's only got less than 10 seconds left to serve in her penalty. Yes, so she'll be zooming out there. Catitude will only have a short amount of time to get out. Oh, and she is through. And it's Bambi again. There is no stopping Bambi. She has jammed three jams in a row. Catitude's bench getting shorter and shorter. Oh, there she goes through again. Again She's on the inside. With her teammates, I noticed. Mm -hmm. they're, they're taking con a little bit of control of the towards. That's distracting them in a way. Yes. As she runs past. She just so, ran literally past. On her toe on stops. The inside. Yep. Some very effective positional blocking being thrown up by Catitude for sure. And she calls it off. 
And I believe she's finally taking a rest after three jams in a row. Three hard jams. Yes, definitely. And 67 for Catitude, 41 for the Vipers. That was another big jam. 12 more points, pardon me, 68 for Catitude, not 67. That gap just keeps on widening. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, not out of reach for Tord, not by a long shot. They've got a lot of time left to catch up. Tons of time. Just over eight minutes left. And there is Tord through the pack first. Is that correct? Correct. Lead jammer. Curly Wench. Got through second. Jammer for Catitude. And Tord just called it off to prevent them from getting any points. Nice strategy. The Vipers have jumped ahead by four points, still within the stone's throw from the lead. It's not impossible to get, as we've seen. Yep, one good jam. One good jam. Power jam. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's how Catitude got up there in the first place. Big time, big time. Thanks to that panty pass confusion, yes. it's a matter of if they can hold that lead. Oh. oh. Bambi That's on Bambi. the inside line, her ankle wobbled a little bit. Hope she's okay. And we've got Sam from Tord is already through the pack. There goes Bambi. Oh. And Big. Sam has fallen outside, out of bounds. She's got to skate backwards to avoid a penalty for cutting. Big drawback from Catitude, which is a huge advantage sometimes. And there she goes. Tord has gone, Tord Jammer has gotten past the pack. Four points. With Catitude's Bambi in the bin, the Vipers are really within a stone's throw distance of closing that gap and surpassing them. That's right. Oh, she's, she's falling down. She's got a little bit of a hit there. She's back up on her feet. Yes, a heavy hit delivered by Neptune June of Catitude. And Bambi is out of the box. But it's a power start for Catitude now as the jammers have changed places in the box. Yes. So they did close that gap up a bit though, the Vipers. They're 53 now and Catitude is at 68. Bambi is going out again for Catitude. I think she's thinking she can widen that gap again. Well, especially with the power start. Absolutely. Power starts give you a greater chance of getting that lead jam status. It's not a guarantee. No, it's not, but it helps. <laughs> it sure helps. <laughs> timeout has been called. And timeout has ended. Five second morning call. And started the jam. Wow. Just like that. Boom. Cat her block, Bambi's blockers on Catitude just opened up that inside lane yep. like it was a vein and she went right through. Yep. Oh, and a, oh, oh, no. She almost got through, but she came up against the wall. <laughs> a big wall. Luna Shovegood making yeah. sure that she doesn't get through there easily. Shovegood is a good name for her. <laughs> yeah, darn right it is. And she's called off the jam. Four points gained for Catitude that jam. And with none for the Vipers, Catitude did manage to widen that gap a little bit. Big time. Well, not big time but in no. these dying moments yeah every point's a big point that's right that's right and 55 for the vipers 72 for catitude that is a big gap that is a big gap but not unreachable it's certainly not as the vipers take it on the outside rosalind shanklin first time i've seen her jam this game Oh, 
pivot went down. And it looks like Shanklin got a penalty for that. Big fall in front of us as Femme Brule goes down like a bag of rocks in front of Volt Aaron. And that's Curly Wench that's jamming for Catitude. Correct. Now that the Vipers lead jammer is in the box, she gets the lead jammer status taken away and from her. And there go the blockers from Catitude trying to help her get through. And there she goes. This jam will go to the full two minute limit. Four points for Catitude. And the jammer for Tord is back on the track. And she's skating with a vengeance. Oh, is she ever. She's looking to make up some time. That gap Four widening. More points for Catitude. She's fighting her way over there toward, toward Jammer. Oh, no, she went out of bounds. She's got to go back. And meanwhile, Curly wrenches through again for Catitude. So far, a 12-point jam for Curly Wench. And Viper hasn't put anything on the board for this jam. And the jam is called off. Amazing blocking being put up by Catitude. Vipers throwing everything they, they can. They are really something, aren't they? Absolutely. The Vipers, a formidable team, to be yes. sure. Yes. But for Catitude, with a bench, a very short bench. That's right. They're, you know, kind of under the... They are flying under that radar. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to hit us up on social media. Hashtag FNF Derby 2019. Tell us how much you love these hits, how much you love these players. Frankly, how much you love us, too. <laughs> We're kind of awesome. No, I'm just, I'm full of myself. Oh, well, you should be. You're a great announcer. As I are you. I love working with you. I love working with you. I can't wait to do the in-house announcing with you for the final game. Oh, me too. I'm looking forward to that. And you can't. You can't see her, but she's wearing this beautiful watermelon dress. I love it. I had to dress fresh for fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like that's the end of that timeout. <laughs> Bambi once again for Catitude. Oh. oh, Bambi's down. Back up again and on the track. Banger and smash with her weapon of ass destruction. Oh, she's up against that shove good wall again through. Close behind her is the Tord Jammer. Yes, Big Dyke Energy not wanting to let her go, but Bambi playing it smart, calling it off. And Bambi's just gone back to the starting line. She's going to do another jam. As the mulligan, just rewind yeah. and do her again. <laughs> And I'm seeing her giving a two big thumbs up back there. She must be telling her coach she's okay. Yeah. And the whistle's blown for the start of the jam. Unbelievable. Is through, but Tord is, I mean, they are side by side. Tord is trying to block her out. Oh. They're both down. They're both up. This is very exciting. And Tord has now passed the, the whoa. Down goes, in the, goes one of the blockers. So that was quite a jam with two, but only two points for Vipers, only one point for Catitude. Less than a minute left in gameplay. Very exciting jam though for a small amount of points. Very. They were chasing. That's, that's what really counts, don't you think? Oh yes. <laughs> we're bang for your buck, of that's course. Right. <laughs> Here for the excitement. <laughs> 
And we've got quite a crowd behind us. Oh, yes. Today. It looks like the bubble has let out as every skater from every team I see here. There's still seats, though. So, again, come on down to Ted Reed. Cut call for the Vipers jammer. Lady Trample, having not made her initial pa pass, still stands a chance of gaining that lead jam status. That's Lady Tremaine. Trample. Oh my goodness. I have been saying her name wrong this whole broadcast. I didn't even look at the name myself. I was listening to you and I just I saw Lady and Tur. <laughs> finally made it through there for the lead jam stamp status. Lady Tremaine could call it off as regulation gameplay has called off. My deepest apologies to Lady Tremaine. Oh. Cut. There's a cut for Tord, I believe. I'm nope. sure everybody at home can nope. hear people behind me screaming, call it, call it, call it. Nope. It is. It was Lady Tremaine, looks like, is heading to the penalty box. She sure is. 20 seconds left in this jam. And Tord is alone doing a power jam. She can do some damage right now. But can she do she enough damage? Gotta, if her blockers can help her through. Oh, yeah. There she goes, she is through, just like that. Five seconds left. Oh, one of the blockers, shove good it looks like, has a penalty as well, heading to the penalty box. Oh. And at the end of that jam, it is 86 for Catitude and 69 for the Vipers. Oh, that, that is the final score. That's that the was, unofficial final score. Unofficial. And with such a short bench as it looks like, Catitude ends this game with only six active players. Yes. Do you know, it seems like that game went by very quickly. It did. It's because it was so action-packed. Yeah, so exciting. And everybody's lined up around the track for the ritual of the players skating by slapping high fives as they go. We can see uh, players, players for the next game. Uh, the Ken Merkin Marauders lining up in front of us. They are seated number one. And so that seems to have been made the official score. That is true. Vipers 69, Catitude 86. So the Vipers had a pretty good start, but that power jam, I think, is what really put Catitude up. That was the turning point, yep. and it was the Achilles heel to their game. They yes. could never surpass them again. Yes, that's right. So, you know, that just shows you. It sure does. You defense. cannot get points if you're in the penalty box. <laughs> and that's defense, defense, defense. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> and Catitude is taking there. Their victory Skate around lap. their victory lap, that's right. A well-earned victory lap. Yes. And the Vipers as well. A shout out to them for a game well played. Yes. And they're all hugging down there. Vipers and Catitude together. That's what I like about Derby. Absolutely. Because it doesn't matter when you're competitors. At the end of it all, there's hugs all around for everybody. Absolutely. Sportsmanship at its finest. Yes, I agree. And there goes toward around the rink for their lap. <laughs> Absolutely. Excellent gameplay for everyone. Once again, my deepest apologies for Lady Tremaine for mispronouncing her name most of the day. <laughs> I'm really sorry, dear. I have to apologize, too, because I didn't notice you've done it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're only human, right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure. Always a pleasure to work with you, Axe Stress. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Magikarp. We'll see you guys in the next round. Bye-bye.
I feel really confident with you because you know what you're doing. Hold on, go to the same.
15 and only plays with six players. I know. How can you do that? <laughs> you all on power aid or what? Good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen. Here to Dragon back on the call. Can American Marauders up against Quad City Hot Rods. And this is three beers and it's the jam number one off to a start and. The Mad Faye picks up lead jammer status. Still a tie game at 1-1. Can American Marauders, I believe, in the black. That's correct. And yes. the Quad City Hot Rods in the white. white. And the Marauders have lead again. Abby Normal. Up against Fox Given. She's got a good half track on her. Abby Normal coming around to the back of the pack. Spins through on the inside and for four points. It off. It's a similar track to the strategy I've seen somewhere before. <laughs> Marauders with a 5-1 lead as we start jam number three. Blunt force Tonya donning the star for the Marauders. Meanwhile, du ducked, ducked up. up. Ducked up completes her first scoring pass for four points. Blunt force Tonya. And ducked up calls it off before Blunt Force can get back in for any points. Game once again all knotted up, five apiece. Fox given is jamming for uh, the hot rods. And I think it's Little Miss Savage for That's the Marauders. probably why I can't see her. Yeah, she's, she's <laughs> Little Miss Savage. And Fox is out, takes lead. Savage right behind her, but does get knocked out of bounds, so she has to be recycled to the back of the pack. Comes around, though, on lane four and gets loose. Fox has about a three-quarter of a lap lead. Ooh, and Fox plows into a wall of Marauders, who then carry her out of bounds. And calls it off. Some nice blocking by the Marauders on that play. Two point pickup for the Hot Rods. They lead seven to five.
I, th I believe it's Mad Maxine jamming for the Marauders on this jam. No. I stand corrected. We'll have to wait until I can get a clear view of a number. Coming through to turn one, we still don't have a lead jammer yet. And it's the Mad Faye picking up lead jam for the Marauders. Ducked up, stashes the star, and then redons it after she makes it through the pack. She's a good half track away, though. Mad Faye Calls picking, it up, off. picking up four and calling it off. Can American Marauders take the lead back? Nine to seven. Real seesaw battle here, folks. Neither of these teams are ready to go home quite yet. This Fox given jamming again for the hot rods. And it looks like I thought I saw a, a 3 2, which would imply Comet Hellbop, but I haven't seen her jam yet today, so I. I Probably not very likely. Oh, it is Comet Hellbop. And did she ever take a shot there? Fox is out with lead. Oh, but Comet manages to sneak through on the inside. About a third of a lap lead. Here comes Fox Given. She gets her four points and calls it off. And Quad City takes the lead back again, 11-9. So at this point of the tournament, folks, we are down to the Elite Eight. Uh, it's still win or go home at this stage. Ducked up is out with lead again. Blunt Force Tonya right on her trail, though. The Marauders, though, have a goat back there, Abby Normal. She's going to be an easy point to pick up. And sure enough, that's, oh, and what a shot. Ducked up those heels overhead. I didn't see how that happened. Still managed to call it off. Quad City, though, with a steal of four there. Fox is back out jamming for uh, Quad City. And I believe, no. Fox Given does pick up lead. Little Miss Savage right hot on her heels. Marauders are sending a player to the box though. So Fox Given Fox Given should have been awarded a point for the player in the box when she picked up the point on the track but the referees are calling it a swap of one. The Marauders are calling a timeout. <laughs> 13 minutes left to go in the game. 16 for the Quad City Hot Rods, 13 for the Can American Marauders. Jax is arguing that point for the one in the box. Yes, this actually this isn't actually a timeout. It's a Quad City is calling an official review, and I I, I think yes that uh, that's my guess is what they are asking, because I see them motioning over to the box quite a fair bit. And we've called over the penalty box. Wrangler or the or the the penalty box timer. Both teams getting a, a well-deserved rest. 
It's very, very hot in the building here today. Very hot and, and especially humid. Yeah, it was just pouring torrents outside, so that should make it even more so in here. Yeah. I mean, I, just speaking from experience, I mean, I, I went out uh, on the break and there was derby girls all over the field, everyone enjoying any shade they could find and, and the cool breeze while it was there. Uh, it's it's just it's a hot venue. It's so it's so taxing on uh, on the endurance here. Both teams working on their strategies over this break, and now the the consultation amongst the the council of zebras has finished, and the results are being passed down to the captains. There's the point for the Quad City. Yeah, that's that's exactly what uh, exactly what we expected. So I would imagine that uh, the challenge will have been deemed successful. Quad City will retain their official review. And they got another point on the board. Exactly. And and as as uh, some of the viewers may have noticed, Three Beers, uh, one of the games earlier today over in the bubble was decided by one, one point. One point, yes. That yeah. Quad City was in that game. They lost that game. Yeah, so there you go. They're, they're going to fight for every point they can get. They know how important it is. Abby Normal uh, thought she had lead, but she apparently Locked went out of bounds. out in lead. Abby Normal now being detained, as it were, by the pack. Ducked up, doing her best to make her way she through the pack. Through, yep. Here comes and Abby Normal. Another four points for the Hot Rods, 21 to 13 in their favor. And I believed it's Fox given up against yep. uh, Mad Faye. Marauders lining up in front. Hot Rods lining up on the jammer line. And Mad Faye putting one foot in front of the other just tightrope walking on that inside track boundary. Picks up lead jammer status. Fox given right behind her. She calls it off before he can get any points. Marauders close the gap, 21-17. Still more than half of the game to play. Interesting, both teams setting up in a diamond formation rather than the wall formation that we've been seeing a lot lately. Especially given given all these players have less than one year playing experience, uh, a diamond formation is a bit harder of a formation to manage defensively. Uh, You've walls, got to be able to move. Yes, you have to. Be, you have to have mobility. You have to have great communication. Walls are usually the easiest because it's just get as wide as you can. And, and slam the gap shut as they try for them. So interesting to see both teams trying for a, a diamond uh, defense here. Meanwhile, as, as we're having that conversation, Ducked Up has lead jammer status and has already completed her first scoring pass. He's, here she's on her second. She gets put on her behind. And uh, looked like a forearm call on one of the Marauders. I think Ducked Up called it off before the Marauders jammer could get through for her second pass. Eight points for the Hot Rods on that jam. 29-17 in favor of the Hot Rods. Ten minutes, ten seconds left to go in the game. Still plenty of derby action for the Marauders to get back in this. Fox is back for the Quad City jamming. I think it might be blunt, blunt force. force. That's the number I can see. Yeah. 
Jam is on, nobody really moving. Each one waiting for the other side to blink first. Blunt force trying to get through on the inside. She gets blocked by Sauerkraut. Fox Given gets brought down and and is there a cut? Blunt force is out with lead. Blunt, so Blunt Force did pick up lead. It looks like one of the Marauders, Snarkmouth, picked up a penalty there as she was trying to draw a cut from Fox. Blunt Interesting. Force calls it off. Three points for the Hot Rods, two for the Marauders on that jam. 32 to 19 hot rods. The marauder uh, blocker that got the penalty was yelling cut when she went by us here. <laughs> yeah, no, I, well, she was, uh, I, I saw her, she thought she would, uh, she was trying to draw back uh, Fox. And make him come in ahead of her and get a cut, right. Yeah, and, and she was shocked when, when Fox didn't get a cut. Um, and I don't know exactly what she herself picked up for her penalty, but she was not very happy about the situation as she went to the box. Ducked up is out his lead. Uh, Little Miss Savage on turn one, still trying to complete her initial pass. She's running into Doc Ness Monster. But she gets out. Ducked up, however, completed has completed a first scoring pass. Four more points for the Hot Rods. Here she comes for another scoring pass. She squeezes to the inside. And I think the big question is, did Savage pick up any points when she sneak, snuck I, through the inside? It looks like she got by a couple. Yep, they're giving her points. Yeah, one point. Seven points for the Hot Rods on that jam. One for the Marauders. 39 to 20. Just under eight minutes left to play. Fox is back out for the Hot Rods. And I think it's Mad Fay for the Marauders. Yes, yeah. When they're tall, I can see them. Yes. <laughs> We're, we're situated on turn one, so we're, we can't really see the jammers' numbers, but uh, you come to recognize them as the game gets going. Mad Faye gets lead jammer status and, and, and then sort of just stands there. And, and yeah, I don't think she was sure that she got I, lead. No, I don't think she was sure either, but, but they need points. They need to be skating. And Fox is out. Mad Faye goes around the outside, completes her first scoring pass, four points. She's putting the wheels down. Fox better get moving. Faye called it off before she got in. Timeout, uh, Quad City. Hot Rods have the lead, 39 to 24. Seven minutes left to go in the game. 15 points, not an insurmountable deficit by any stretch. Marauders sending out a, a new, relatively new jammer. Ducked uh, up, gets lead for the uh, Quad City. And the Marauders send out Susanna Scorus Rex. First time I've seen her jamming. Yeah, I mean, uh, an interesting choice to be, I mean, I, I haven't seen all the Marauders games today, but I certainly haven't seen her jam yet today. Being down by 15 points, I, I you know, I think I'd be going with the tried and true, but yeah, the more points to by your your regulars is usually a strategy. I would. Think. Uh, uh, of would. course, they may be thinking that their their regular jammers aren't having any luck. Let's try something new, or they need to rest their jammers. That for, that yeah, could be might, too. They might be getting a little fatigued. Three points for Quad City on that last jam, forty-two to twenty-four. 
is their lead. Six minutes left to go in the game. Fox is back out for Quad City. And Mad Maxine for the Marauders. Fox picks up lead. Mad Maxine hot on her heels. I think we'll see Fox probably call this one off relatively soon. Oh, and there's easy points. Easy points for Fox there. A whistle, a whistle was called, and Betty White stood up. Wondered what was going on. Fox, Fox just blew and, right by and the Fox, ball. Fox blew past her, and then because she passed her, picked up all the points for all the blockers in the box as well. That's, I mean, I was uh, I was talking with the coaches for the thicket on on the break, and uh, I said it reminded me of uh, a lot of these freshies remind me of meerkats. They they they're doing good playing, and then they hear a whistle. And they, they immediately for, stand up. They forget what they're playing. They stand up. They, they stand up. They look around. What? Me? Me? Am I the one getting? And meanwhile, here comes the jammer zipping through. And you're not ja you're, taking your points. From yeah, them. you're not blocking the jammer. So that's a common problem. I mean, that's not me trying to single out anyone in particular. Oh, it's typical because this is a freshie. Yeah, they hear the yeah. they hear the whistle and they immediately think, did I do something wrong? What did I do? Are you telling me to leave the track? And meanwhile, a good jammer comes by and just says, thanks for your point. Vote to start jam 17, and it's 46 for Quad City to 24 for the Marauders. Two blockers in the box for the Marauders, one for the Hot Rods, but their, their blockers standing. And I think ducked up. Yes, ducked up picks up lead jammer. And the Marauders jammers go into the penalty box for a cut. Yeah, Betty Betty the Whip White go into the box. Oh, and we have a referee down. Players getting laid out all over the track. Four points. Four ducked up. And it's a, it's a steady stream of marauders going to the box now. This the, the their game's falling apart, I think, in their in their desperation to catch up and, and we're getting a lot of sloppy play. And and it's a double penalty to them because the fact that they've got people in the box means that they haven't got blockers to stop the jammer and they're getting the jammer scoring points on people that you know they don't have to pass. Yeah, the hot the hot rods in fact have put up 12 uh, well now 16 points alone on this jam, which when compared even to the Marauders score, I mean they she's almost outscored the Marauder, the entire Marauders team on her own on this jam. The the the, the short the short game format of, of the tournament really it really penalizes penalties. Which it seems kind of uh, catch twenty two because it's a fresh tournament. You're going to there's going to be a lot of sloppy play from new players. That's and, true. And they're going to get penalties, but yeah, it, it seems that the, there, there there just seems to be one or two uh, jammers to be able to capitalize on the mistakes of the others. And we have another official timeout. 63 for the Hot Rods, 24 for the Marauders. 39 point deficit, four minutes left to go. You were talking earlier uh, about a jammer or uh, a referee going down. Uh, that's usually not very uh, a common occurrence, but um, it, it's sometimes unavoidable that you know players can't get out of the way of each other or the referees, depending on where they are on the track. And it's, you know, it sometimes it results in a referee going down. Yeah, some, and sometimes it's just a trip. It happens to the best of us. Fox given picks up lead jammer. And Savage is being drawn back. So Fox has almost got a full a full lap on. She does now. And she's blowing through. Yeah. Another four points. Savage still has yet to complete her initial scoring pass. There it is. She's out. 
Now the question is, is does, does Fox run down the clock or does she she worry about points? No, she's calling it off, so yeah. there's points, yep. Yeah, content to content to, to make that differential larger. We'll let the clock uh, run another 30 seconds on the uh, in between jams and uh, make it less likely the Marauders can catch up. Yeah. If, you're, if your jammer's not on the track, they're not going to get a penalty. Those 30 seconds are free 30 seconds off the clock, essentially. Another one of the strategy 101. Yeah. Ducked up Picking once up again. Lead. Yep. Picking up Lee Jimmer says again, again, Comet Hellbop, or Hellbop, sorry, uh, manages to spring herself free. Oh, and a, an apex jump by Ducked Up. She's trying to call it off. Jammer on that one looked like she was a little bit slow on the call off, but she didn't look to you like she was sure what was going on. No real effect. Uh, Marauders weren't awarded any points on that jam anyway. If anything, it worked to the Hot Rod's favor. Two minutes left to go in the game. Hot Rods 75, Marauders 24. Looks like the Hot Rods might have this one effectively in, in the in the bag, but what do I know? I, I mean, the last game... Yeah, we've called, seen things turn around quite, yeah. quite quick. I, I think if the Hot Rods can keep it clean... They should be. They should be okay. But Mad Fay picks up lead. Meanwhile, the hot the, is down and out. The hot rod sends sauerkraut out oh. to jam. Yes. So, who? Apex jump for Mad Fay. Another four points. That's yeah. That's four and points. Hot sauerkraut hot goes down got, once again. Through their first run yet. Interesting strategy by the hot rods to put uh, an untested J. Oh, that apex jump was not successful. No, you got to go back out. Inter interesting strategy to put sauerkraut out there. Um, realistically, you want to you want to put someone out there who's going to put some pressure on the Marauders jammer. But uh, the Marauders pick up four, five, six, six points, closing the gap seventy-five to thirty-one. Yeah, with less than a minute to go, I I, I can't see them resting the hot rod jammers. But you know, because there was only been two of them, Fox and Ducked Up playing. So to yeah. put out to put out another jammer to let those two rest for one minute doesn't make much sense. Yeah, I mean they're they're gonna get a they're gonna get a break between games. Um, but I also, I mean not again not to not to insult the Marauders. I I think really they're playing for for pride at this point. I mean I think that's why you're seeing Faye try apex jumps on every pass. She just wants to see what she can do. Uh, Blunt Force Tonya here has uh, has picked up four points. Ducked up right behind her, picked up four points. Ducked up has lead. There's four seconds left in regulation. She could comfortably comfortably call it off anytime she wants. And the jam has been called off unofficially. The score: 79 Hot Rods. 35 Marauders. Actually, we just seen the score go up. 82 for the Hot Rods, 36 for the Marauders. That's an unofficial score, but I don't see the I don't see any adjustments being in the neighborhood of 40 or so points. So I think it's no, pretty no. pretty safe to say yeah. the Hot Rods are advancing. Yes, that is the final score, 82 to 36. All right, folks, well, you got a few minutes to get yourself a snack, get yourself a drink, and in just a few minutes, uh, yet some more Derby action will be up here coming to you live. Fresh and the Furious 2019. Don't go anywhere. I guess Nick didn't make it back. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm on house for the next game. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs>
looking to get inside at least a little bit. I must, oh, I smell like ass. Oh. Right, so what are, where are we at? We're at. <laughs> well, I think Tanya's making up the next set. Depend, depending on whether or not there's a French team. Tanya's got the next set. Okay. And I think Tanya's making up the next set. Oh. And Because it depends on whether or not there's a French team. She speaks French. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. But hey, what do I know? <laughs> Always losing your pen. No, I can't see it. on what Kenya's supposed to be making up the next schedule. It depends on how she does it.
We've seen both of these teams match up. We know that they are both teams that are formidable against one another. Catitude holding their own with such a small bench. Hogtown Party, the advantage with a larger bench. Catitude through. Neptune June is first strike with Zool not too far behind her for Hogtown Party. I'm Carps. Joining me is Axe Strix. How you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. This has been a really exciting day. A lot of upsets, some um, that were expected. And... The emotional roller coaster is real. Yes. And we're off on another one now. Oh, yes. As we get closer and closer, who's going to be at the end of it all? We are <laughs> getting down to the nitty and or gritty. <laughs> Okay, and there they go. Bambi through for lead jam status. Miss Chief not too far behind her. Both of these jammers throughout the day, if you've noticed, are quite jukey and quite sneaky. Bambi with an apex jump attempt aborted when she failed to land on her skate before falling. That nullifies any points gained in the air. Hogtown Party leading Catitude 3-2. to two. Yes. Zool sneaks through on the inside for lead jam. And again, through again for an easy ace. Four and here points. Here comes Catitude. Neptune Jim. You know, I don't think I've ever seen Zool skating for a Hogtown party without a smile on her face. She really must enjoy getting beaten up. <laughs> Official timeout has been called. This timeout brought to you by Spectrum Event Medical Services. As Ontario's largest event medical services company, we provide on-site medical teams to ensure the health and safety of your attendees. Whether you're hosting a football game, concert, gala, or filming a movie or television show, our team of certified professionals can perform on-site medical services and or escort attendees to hospital via our non-urgent patient transfer vehicles. That's Spectrum Event Medical Services. Hogtown Party and Catitude, close proximity and scores. I feel like these teams are pretty evenly matched. What do you make, what do you, uh, make of this, Axe? Yeah, I think so, too. It's going to be an interesting game and to see who, the, who comes out on top in this one. Absolutely. And Curly Wench is our pivot there. I can't see who the... Jammer is for well, Catitude. Catitude is Bambi. Is it Bambi back there? It certainly is. Unfortunately, I can't quite see who Hogtown Party is. Yeah, she was kneeling down there on the floor. Ah, it's Miss Chief. Ah. Thank you, awesome camera dude. I love the names that these girls come up with. You are telling me. There are a couple of humdingers out there today, let me tell you. <laughs> Bambi is just on the edge. 
But not before Miss Chief could get through. No, no, not before. Miss Chief is the lead jammer with Bambi right on her heels, and Miss Chief calls it off. Don't know if it was in time to stop Bambi. Nope. No, I believe they're evenly matched at four apiece this round. Yep, that's how it came out. So the winner of this game goes on to play in the semis. Wow, so we're really knocking teams out oh, now. Oh, it's the nitty gritty dirt band. <laughs> Zool, sneaky. And there she goes. She is off. Well, Neptune June has gotten through. Zool hitting Zool. it and quitting it. Yep, she got through the pack, got her points, called it off. She needs to build a gap. Neptune June didn't get a chance to go through. Not at all, no. She made her initial pass, but Zool said nay, nay to any further points. We were just informed that Catitude is officially down to six players. That is a uh, tough road to hoe, but they seem to have the willpower and the determination to succeed. They do. They have been skating and taking taking turns doing the jamming. They are taking Sometimes names and more than butt. once in a row. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes more than twice in a row. <laughs> Bambi, we're talking to you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Okay, Catitude is jumping onto the track here. Are we surprised it's Bambi for Catitude? We Catitude's? are not surprised. <laughs> and Miss Chief, a familiar person on the line. Yep. So we'll see who comes out on top out of these two. Oh, it's Bambi. She's she, through. You know what? Her blockers are so good at they that goal for her so she can get through easily. Is through, not lead jammer, but she's through. To avoid a penalty. She keeps Ms. going. Chief is through the pack. Bambi is going through Four this pack points. like a hot knife through butter. There's no stopping her. So that was four points for Bambi and four points for Miss Chief. I think that was the first four points for Miss Chief. It was. According to the scoreboard, Catitude has racked up 12 points this jam as opposed mm -hmm. to uh, Hogtown Party's four. she went through. Bambi just went through pretty much uncontested. Good. I would say that's down to her blocker. Absolutely. And Miss Chief is through again with three points. Hop, skip, and a jump for Bambi, and she calls it off. 20 big points for Catitude. That is something because that has made the score 30 for Catitude and 22 for Hogtown Party. Now, that means previously it was 10 for Catitude. Yes, it was. They gain 20 points, and yeah. if they keep up with that, they'll mm -hmm. be able to hold that lead. Well, we've seen them do this before. Oh, have we ever. And look at that. Bambi through again. And here's the penalty for Hogtown. Duo. She's the jammer, and she's going to the penalty box. Well, Bambi goes through again. That was a nice feint by points. Bambi. This is a power jam, so they could get a they could get far ahead in this one. They're Ab already ahead, but they could really widen that gap here. Absolutely. If this is another 20-point jam, which is it's shaping up to be, that's a lot of insurance for them. It is. 
then all they have to do is play defense. And really, you can use your jammer as, a, a dish, as an additional defensive player. That's right. Another four points for Bambi. I don't know how that girl is still standing. The jammer is out of the penalty box from the Hogtown team. And she has gotten through. Now Bambi is going to the penalty box. So we've got a power jam for the other team. This is their chance to do some catching up. Your bet, a little bit of damage control to stop that bleed. Oh, and she threw, she just swished and swerved and found her way through there. There she comes again. Zool, like her namesake Whoa, from Ghostbusters, can just pass wow, through anything. What a move. This girl's got the moves. I'm enjoying this camera guy because he's getting my weird references. <laughs> camera dude, marry me. Oh, big block. I'm already married, camera dude, but he won't mind. <laughs> oh, he's engaged. Okay, we're good. And the jam is ended. They did close the gap a little bit there. Still Catitude coming on top point-wise. Yep. Yep. 16 points gained that jam as opposed to parties. Yep, 13. 13. So we've got 46 for Catitude and 35 for Hogtown. That's at the end of the seventh jam as we head into the eighth. Is that Bambi again? That is oh Bambi, are you surprised? I'm not, and she's oh, through. I wow. don't know where she gets the fortitude. I have no, it must be nice to be young. Let's just say that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> young and energetic. <laughs> oh, I forget what that's like. <laughs> and the jammer from Hogtown is in the penalty box. Another golden opportunity handed yep. to Catitude. Yeah, they did get some points the last from a power jam the last time oh. for Hog Town, but now it's again power jam this time for Catitude. They can take those points back away. They surely can. The points giveth and the points taketh away. <laughs> Bambi. Four points for Bambi. Bambi for the first time, I'm seeing her a little bit tired. Yeah. Oh, and she just took a running start and faked them and went off to the inside. They weren't she, expecting it. She must have been born wearing toe stops. <laughs> oh, okay. Jammer is out of the box for Hogtown. Hot Flash. Now that's a name I can relate to. Especially on a day like today. Guys, here, it, the skies just opened up and it was a torrential downpour and now it's very muggy in the Ted Reeves Arena. They've got the big fan going up there and I can feel a bit of breeze coming in. Absolutely. The humidity making a bit of a difference in the floor conditions, making it a little slicker due to mild condensation. Twenty four points for Bambi that jam. And Hogtown got four. Catitude yeah. running away with this game mm -hmm. and a six person bench. But still lots of time. Tons I mean, of time. Still lots of time to catch up for Hogtown. All is not lost at this point. Absolutely not. I mean, as we can see here, we've had a couple of 20-point jams. It would yep. just take another couple 20-point jams for Hogtown Party to pull ahead. Yep. And this might be it. Azul Whoa. runs away with it. Neptune June making friends with the floor. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, and she squeaked Whoa. through there on one skate. The game was, or the uh, jam was called. A 
Looks like we have a partial full house over in the sin bin with uh, two party blockers and one catitude blocker in the bin. I think the catitude is, uh, is the pivot there. It is the pivot. Hard to see. There's a lot of people between us. <laughs> between us and the, the bin. Miss Chief just getting lead jam status very, very narrowly as Bambi was hot on her heels. Oh, and she's calling the jam. Now, Miss Chief was very smart in calling that jam when yeah, she did. She was. It's about playing smarter and not harder in the, at this point in the tournament. Yes. And the teams are getting on the track again, ready for the next jam. That looks like Bambi there. And it looks like they're just checking her stop. I don't blame them. She uses them a lot. <laughs> she absolutely does. Okay, then. So Bambi is through first, but the Hogtown jammer has flew past her, so she called it off before she must, any damage was done. Yes, absolutely. She must be feeling some fatigue at this point and maybe just wanted to hit it and quit it without catching any points on either side. And they're ready to go again. So, oh, and a love tap Jim, out. Jim, yep, and she's out the door. Oh, and so it is the hog count. Jammer. Neptune June evades Bishop or escape Bishop. Duel is through the pack. Not lead jammer, but she's through. Neptune June is going to attempt to get through. Oh, yep, she went, and so did Zool. Neptune June calling that off, but not before Zool could do a, a little bit of damage with four points. That's four points for each of them. At least they didn't fall any further behind. Very true. Timeout has been called for Hogtown Party. This timeout brought to you by Complete Energy Solutions for all you HVAC, emergency management, and medical needs. Call Complete Energy Solutions. Now, each year, Hogtown Rollers share a portion of the proceeds uh, with the community. They do a league charity. Uh, and other charitable uh, organizations. This year, Hogtown is fundraising for Canadian Roots Exchange. They believe in a Canada where youth stand in solidarity to promote respect, understanding, and reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. Their goal is to build bridges between Indigenous and non-Indigenous youth in Canada by facilitating dialogue and strengthening relationships through leadership programs. I think that that's, sounds great. Isn't that fantabulous? It is. It is. It's nice to know that our youth are taking part in these kinds of things. Absolutely. And certainly a worthy cause. More than worthy. Looks Five like we're ready to go. Called. There's the whistle. Miss Chief overtaking Bambi for lead jam. That doesn't happen too often. No, it hasn't. Here comes Miss Chief. Bambi following. Bambi looks a little tired, I think. I think at this point it might and be in the Chief is through and she calls it. At this point, with under six minutes left in the game, it might be Catitude's best interest into just playing the defense and trying to hold that lead. Yes. We've got 53 points now for for Hogtown, they just got four points. Catitude has 78, so they're still far ahead, but they didn't get any points in that last jam. No, they didn't. And you know what? It's a power start for Hogtown because Bambi is, is sitting in the penalty box. Ah, yep. But it looks like Miss Chief is joining ah. her. Well, this is going to be interesting to see this start. Well, it will because Miss Chief will only serve the same amount of time as Bambi, and since Bambi was released immediately as soon as Miss Chief's butt hit that chair, yeah, it was a short reprieve. And Miss Chief is through. 
<laughs> Just like that. Out of the box and through the pot. Just pirouetting. Oh, but she's back in the box. She must have missed it in there. Ah. And here comes Bambi on a power jam. And she's through. She makes it look so simple. She really does. And with Lady Tremaine hanging back with the rest of Hogtown Party, she offered some nice offense for her. Yep. And Tip. there she goes again. You see, the blockers push kind of the, the other blocker, the Hogtown blockers to the side at the outside and then Bambi squeaks through on the inside. That's what it looks like she, they're doing. Absolutely, it's like pulling back a shower curtain. Yes, but after doing it so many times, the other team should you know, know that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> Quite possibly, but I mean, there's so many different angles yeah. to come at it. If yep. you keep switching it up. Yep, do the same thing, but let her go around the outside. Around the outside, yeah, around the outside. You never know where she's gonna show up. There is Miss Chief. She is coming around the track. She's out of the penalty box. And it's been called. I don't know how Bambi is going to be able to walk tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got 16 points thanks to Bambi in that last jam. Miss Chief was in and out of that penalty box. Yeah, she didn't get any points. No. She couldn't win that jam, and that came up to Catitude's benefit. Yes. So we're at 94 for Catitude and 53 for Hogtown Party. Hogtown Party at the trying front, trying to stop Neptune June, couldn't do it. Neptune June is the lead jammer. And, and wow, there was a big jump. That was a big jump. I think she collected some frequent flyer miles up there. <laughs> That's Zool that we're talking about. Absolutely. And she got through again. Not and it looks like the jammer, Neptune June, is in the penalty box. So it's a power jam for Hogtown Party. They can Zool can do some. Catch oh, there she goes through again. Another four points. She could do some significant damage this jam. Wow, that is amazing. 12 points so far for Hogtown Party. Okay, well, she's got a little bit of a blocking to do, and the jammer is out of the penalty box and through the pack. Four points put up by Neptune June and Catitude. Trying to undo some of that damage now that all the blockers are. Zool's trying to get through. Zool off to the sin bin, uh, and it's a power jam yep. for Catitude. So the tide has turned. Very <laughs> thanks to Neptune Not June. Not that it ever was tied. No. <laughs> Maybe Neptune June pulling from the powers of Poseidon. Who knows? Well, right now they're tied at 12 points each for this jam, and Neptune June has just gotten through one more time. So, Catitude breaking that triple digit ceiling. 16 points for Catitude and 12 for Hogtown Party last jam. High scoring jam, really, for both teams. It's it hard to believe that. A lot of these skaters have been skating less than a year. Yes, it is hard to believe. They're very good. They are. I'm, I'm sure they must practice a lot and work very hard. Oh, it's nothing but hard work and props to them. And is this Zool that I'm looking at or Miss Chief? That is Bambi up against Miss Chief as a blocker. Zool's been released ah, from the box. Okay then, and there she comes through. Oh, she tried to do that jump again, but she didn't make it this time. She's had to go back to yep. avoid a penalty. Right. And meanwhile... Oh, big push out to Bambi. That jam ran its full two minutes. Timeout has been called for Hogtown Party. 
And it looks like they've put one point up for Catitude and then for Hogtown Party. We'll see if that sticks at the end of this timeout. We shall have to see with two minutes of regulation play left. This is a strategic maneuver done by Hogtown Party, forcing another jam and another opportunity for them to close that gap. But with over 50 points to, yeah. that's going to have to be one heck of a jam. Yeah. <laughs> and props to them for wanting to do it. Yes, <laughs> that's for sure. And if you want in on this action, you can go to hashtag FNN. Derby. Derby 2019. Yes. FNN Derby 2019. Also. FNN stands for Fresh and Furious. Absolutely. We're fresh. We're furious. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> There's refreshments here. You can shop at the vendors. Excellent vendors this year. And if you're interested in playing Derby yourself, I know at least one of these vendors is selling fresh meat. Actually, yes, I believe a lot of these vendors are selling fresh meat packages. We have here Pivot Star, Gentle Force Jewelry, Monster Muffin, Rollerskatin.ca, Rumblin' Rage, Bite Me Boutique, Derby Rebel Boutique, Sweet Legs, and the food truck Aegean Honey Balls and Greek Street Eats, which, like I said earlier, I had some of those honey balls. They were amazing. <laughs> I'm going to try some after this game. So we have Sewell. She got bounced out. She's Catitude oh, called the it. Game is over. We've got an unofficial score. 111 for Catitude, 65 for Hogtown Party. So Catitude has won this one. Catitude, the underdog of this. Well, they only have six players, for heaven's sake. I don't know how they're doing it, if they're mainlining coffee or what. <laughs> Channeling their inner derby spirit. <laughs> oh, their inner derby spirit must be ferocious because, holy cow, they are not giving up anything without a fight. We were talking about derby names. Yes. And there's one right in front of us. Her name is Pinky and the, and the Pain, P-A-I-N. Pinky and the Pain. That's going <laughs> to be it. in my head all day. <laughs> and a hard-fought W for Catitude as they take their victory lap. And right behind them comes Pogtown taking their lap as well. Game well played. Very well played. Well fought. Only one can win. And it was Catitude. And it was Catitude. All right. I'm Carps. That's Axtress. We'll see ya. Stay tuned for game three of round three. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. 